Hi guys, so today I'm at VidCon, it's the final day and I just wanted to do a recap on what I discussed on my blog. So I did a blog about uh, how to cope at conventions when you've got like something like ADHD or even mental health problems. So I just wanted to go through the things I discussed and I also discussed some things that VidCon themselves put in place. Like one of the things I did want to mention that they've done is the disability ribbons, which nine times out of 10 work. It's a fantastic concept and idea. Personally, I've had a fantastic time at VidCon. Um, it's been really good having the creator um, ticket. However, I do think creator tickets, um, I think, not everyone would get the same benefit from them. My last blog post was called How To Conventions and ADHD, but it can relate to anybody with any neurological condition or anxiety, depression, anything like that, mental health problems. So the first thing I said was scoping out the venue, which did work in a way. However, because there is a limit to what time you can go into certain areas, it doesn't always work at VidCon. The big one is the Esport Hall's not open on Friday, so we couldn't scope out that area. Um, and upstairs we could scope it but it's more the problem is that you're not allowed up to a certain time anyway so it's not even like you can scope it out before you start doing things also the areas do change on, a, on the Friday we were allowed in here however then Saturday Sunday we have been so it does change and also it's not always well signed where you can go um, so the middle floor you're not allowed in because it's to our um, featured creators all access people. All access people. Um, but that's not clearly labelled. There's just a big buff guy stood outside the door being like, have you got an invite? So that is, I think it's easier at other conventions to go part of the venue first. Um, but it's also not impossible if it can't. You can just get the basic idea of where things are. So the next thing is finding good and helpful staff. That has been really good actually here. Um, all the security have been really helpful. There, with the issue we had with the disability seating yesterday, they were fantastic, really helped us um, went out of their way. Um, there is obviously that divide of people that understand and people that don't. Um, like I was having like a bit of a sensory overload yesterday, which I put in the vlog and this woman did help her. She said, oh, you know, there's this place you can go to, it's a lot quieter. If not, ask someone else that's dressed like me that's over there. And they, they might know more, they might be aware of somewhere that you can go. So finding good and helpful staff at VidCon was very easy. And I do think it's a very important thing. If you have something that could cause you, whether it's ADHD, autism, or any kind of neurodevelopmental disorder or mental health conditions. Queuing systems hasn't really been an issue for us here. Um, because we've not really queued for stuff and the panels we've gone into it's just kind of been a walk-in situation. We've only really done creator panels um, and not really any community stuff so we've not really needed to queue. I think the only queue we've actually been in is on the first main day so yesterday morning when they did the official opening to VidCon and we literally just queued for like two minutes. So that's not really an issue here that I've had to deal with myself as a creator, but it might be different in community because I have seen a lot of queues such as queuing to get your pass to do registration on Saturday. It was absolutely crazy. And obviously meet and greet queues, all this lot, which we haven't had to deal with. We pretty much just walked into places we need to be, but it's something I would recommend looking into on my blog for future for advice. I did contact the venue, so this is about before the event. I did contact the Excel and they were fantastic. They passed on the information to the relevant staff and said, you know, this is these are the things you can do to help yourself. The only problem there is, is there is a quiet zone. However, it's on the floor we can't enter. In the Excel, there is different areas. There's like a prayer room, there's other family rooms and stuff. So you can, but I've been actually okay. I've not really needed other than that one episode where I ended up going to sit outside and I was absolutely fine. Um, so generally speaking, it's not been really that much of an issue. Um, I've done quite well. I think it's because we've been in a quieter area um, with not as many people. But obviously, if you're in the actual main community convention area it probably would become an issue because it does get very busy down there so that is something that before the event you should contact the venue the organizers maybe and just say this is a thing I suffer with could you please maybe give me some advice of what I should do in this situation again coping while there it's it's like I said it's not really been an issue for me but it is gonna be an issue for some people um, because you don't have the same accessibility that I do with having a creative pass um, where I can just come in. To, okay, it's not always really quiet in the um, creator lounge, but it's quieter than downstairs <laughs> where everyone for community is. And so that is something that you really need to be aware of, of coping while you're there, because at the end of the day, your health comes first. You know, it's it's meant to be fun. And 
and if you're feeling stressed at any point when you come to these things then it's not fun and you need to find new ways to be able to enjoy yourself um, especially like with the community because I've done conventions like this where I've been community and I've not had this special access stuff um, but I found that more overwhelming than way more overwhelming than I had this weekend and it, I have noticed there's a big difference in how I feel at the end of the convention. I'm tired, absolutely exhausted, but I don't feel as mentally drained as I would have done. Even if you have got like a creative pass, it's important to bring someone because if you suffer with a neurological condition or a mental health condition, then you could still, you know, you could, you could still need someone with you to cope. Even if you have this access to being able to take yourself away somewhere quieter, and all the staff and everyone helping, you can still go into a meltdown. So it's really important, we <laughs> just play music. <laughs> it's really important to make sure you have someone with you at these events, and I shall see you all later. Bye guys.